Everyone, it's my pleasure to introduce our work, a comprehensive study of in-memory computing on large HPC systems. This work was conducted in New Jersey Institute of Technology and collaborated with Sun Yat-sen University and Oak Ridge National Lab. Why we need this uh, in-memory computing in HPC? Uh, first, uh, compute is involving from pet scale to exa scale uh, in this decade. Uh, in particular, this, this compute is powered by the customized uh, uh, GPUs, which can largely promote the compute compatibility of HPC systems. On the other side, the persistent storage I.O. has been a performance bottleneck on data-intensive HPC simulations and analytics for last decade, while SSD-based uh, bus buffer can elevate I.O. bottleneck, but it cannot solve it uh, completely. So this can drive uh, HPC communities to look for more efficient solutions, such as in-memory computing that aims to address this challenge at a memory layer. In general, there are two modes of HPC in-memory computing. The first is in transit, in which simulation data is staged at a, a dedicated staging area and uh, which will be consumed by the uh, analytics. The purpose of this method is that simulation can run asynchronously with the uh, data staging. Uh, the cons is that there are uh, extra data movement and uh, data staging area needed for this method. Uh, current, currently, uh, data space times flex pass and decaf uh, use this method. Another is uh, in situ, in which analytics can directly access to the simulation memory. And the plus is that uh, the limited, this is limited uh, or no data uh, copies for both uh, between the uh, simulation and uh, data analytics. The cons is that uh, simulation is slowed down due to the time sharing between uh, simulation and uh, analytics runnings. So uh, currently, lack of uh, the community of HPC, lack of the comp completely evaluations and understanding of the in-memory computing on large scale HPC systems. So in this paper, we have done the following contributions. Uh, first of all, we have uh, performed the end-to-end -end performance study on the uh, scientific workflow that use uh, in-memory computing libraries to uh, connect uh, the simulations and uh, data analytics. And also we analyze the software university, uh, software usability and portability and the robustness of uh, in-memory computing libraries. And uh, we did uh, in-depth in qualitative and quantitative analysis of the behaviors of in-memory computing libraries. Uh, in addition, we also summarize a number of key findings shedding light on the weakness and the possible areas for, re for future research, such as the insights of how to tune the performance of in-memory libraries on two distinct HPC systems, such as uh, Titan and uh, Core Ignis. Uh, basically, in this paper, we study the following four types of HPC memory computing frameworks. Uh, the first is data space. The second is DAMS. These two are uh, developed by Rutgers University, and uh, both of the two uh, s frameworks are using a dedicated staging area to staging the data from uh, simulation to the analytics. And uh, as you can see, that uh, the, uh, the the difference between the two system is that uh, uh, data space uh, staging both metadata and the data on s on the staging servers. Uh, on the other hand, the DAMs only staging the metadata on the dedicated area. The third uh, 
framework is FlagPath, which is developed by uh, Georgia Tech and Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, this method uh, uses uh, events for subscription and publishing uh, for the metadata. And uh, once the uh, analytics received the published uh, metadata, it will request to the uh, simulation to retrieve the, da the data from uh, simulation's data staging area. And uh, the fourth uh, framework is DCAF, which is developed by Argon National Lab. And this is a uh, data flow system uh, where the data will be will, uh, flowing for, from simulation to a data set staging nodes. And then the, after processed by the data staging node, this data will, for, uh, will continue uh, flow to the um, destination node where well, the analytics uh, running on this uh, destination node. Before start to run the experiment on real test bed, we first assess the usability of uh, the four in-memory libraries. We can see that uh, uh, all lines of code are most uh, uh, used on the build options and uh, runtime configurations and uh, call the uh, data staging APIs. As you can see that uh, some uh, APIs are complex and some are, uh, are easy to use. And uh, basically these uh, uh, APIs are number of code are used for uh, depict uh, global data where configuration files uh, and also we have to call some uh, third party IO interfaces such as RDOs to access the staging servers. Also for the uh, special uh, in-memory library, DCAF, it adopts uh, uh, Python or C++ to wrap the components into one MPI communicators so that uh, the simulations, analytics, and the uh, in-memory libraries in one MPI communicators can use that uh, uh, MPI collective I uh, collective communication operations to ex exchange data. So based on the uh, usability access, access, we conclude finding one that, that in terms of usability, in-memory libraries are still far from being plug and play for domain scientists. And most of them require uh, substantial support from uh, IPCPC administrators or library develop developers. Uh, for example, choosing the optimal build options and the runtime I.O. configurations. As for the complex build options, in this evaluation, we adopt the following uh, build uh, options for our evaluation on the in-memory libraries. Uh, we can see that uh, the data space and the dams, it can be, uh, they can be built with RDOs. RDOs is, uh, is a set party uh, IO interfaces that uh, uh, have a lot of functions for uh, manipulate data in memory or in uh, persistent storage. And also uh, the flex pass has to build with RDOs. And um, for the DCAF, it build uh, independently, but it has to be configured at runtime for the uh, direction of its data flow and, uh, and the number of data flow and destination nodes. The workflow that we use to evaluate our in-memory libraries uh, are as follows. The first two are real uh, HPC applications uh, that are LAMPS and LAPLAS. The LAPS uh, is a molecular dynamic simulator and its corresponding analytics is mean square displacement, MSD. Uh, Laplace is solving Laplace equation in a rectangle region, and its corresponding analytics is moment turbulence uh, data analysis. And the third workflow is a synthetic workflow 
uh, which is just a, a parallel benchmark that output data into stage server and a reader that will retrieve data from the staging server. To get the big picture of the performance, we evaluate our uh, in-memory library with uh, two types of workflows, uh, labs and Laplace on two uh, rare HPC systems. Uh, the left is Titan at Oak Ridge National Lab. The right is uh, Corey at uh, NERS. And in the, this grid of figures, the first row is the baseline uh, that we only run uh, simulations and analytics uh, independently without I.O. operations. The second row is we use uh, MPI I.O. for uh, staging our uh, simulation data into uh, persistent uh, uh, storage luster and then the analytics read this data from luster and the following uh, figures are, are the end, end time of running workflows where uh, various of in-memory libraries and in this figure, we can see that over, overall, the in-memory libraries show better performance than MPIO, uh, except uh, data space on Titan. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, uh, the fixed number of last OS keys and MGS uh, limit the scalability of MPIO. Also, we find that the scalability of data space is worse than others due to the mismatch of its global data decomposition and the layout for the simulation data. And also, uh, data space and times fail to uh, serve workflows with the scale of eight uh, uh, one ninety two um, processes. After analyzing the design of uh, uh, data space, we found the cause of the problem uh, of data decomposition. Actually, in data space, the de data decomposition has two directions. The first is from the simulation data. The second is from the uh, direction of uh, a process. So the left part of this uh, diagram is showing how the how the data is decomposed by the direction of simulation data. So, uh, the after the da simulation data is decomposed, this data has been ha has to be uh, saved to staging se server one by one, and this result in uh, low performance uh, uh, of n to one data access. Uh, on the other hand, the if the data uh, if the simulation data is decomposed by the direction of a uh, process, then uh, this data can be concurrently uh, saved onto staging servers, and result in a high performance end to end uh, data access. <coughs> so our ev our evaluation also also confirms our uh, analysis. And uh, we can see that after changing the direction and uh, that the direction match the, the, uh, the direction of uh, a process, then the end-to-end uh, -end time has been largely uh, reduced. So, so we got this finding too. The, the mismatch between staging data layout and uh, the decomposition strategy can result in uh, unexpected uh, N2-1 access to data staging area. This can uh, introduce a significant uh, performance penalty at a scale. So uh, to evaluate the me memory usage uh, overhead, we use uh, a tool operon to uh, show in the memory usage of the four uh, in-memory libraries. Uh, as you can see that uh, in the uh, 
in the workflow Laplace, each process can output uh, 182 megabytes data. So uh, each data space serve, uh, server saves uh, 16 Laplace processes, thus result in more than 2 gigabyte uh, uh, staging data. So each decaf server saves two Laplace processes, which have, uh, means that uh, totally is uh, uh, 256 megabyte data staging data. And uh, we uh, will observe that uh, the dams can save memory usage uh, where staging data at uh, RD RDMA layer, but uh, the decaf use uh, uh, more than two gigabyte memories, significantly more than what we expect expected. Uh, so we further break down the uh, memory usages of uh, decaf. We can see that uh, uh, the data transformation and the data buffer contribute largely to the memory usage of decaf about 69% uh, and the uh, transformation and the buffer are not only in the server side but also in the simulation and the analytics which are routed by decaf clients. So this ex extra data uh, transformation between raw data and the internal object of Python with rich semantic information and the total memory consumption of decaf is seven times that of the raw data size. So that's uh, explain why the memory usage of decaf is more than two gigabyte, but the actual uh, staging data in decaf's decaf server is only about uh, two hundred and fifty six megabyte. So then we conclude finding three the raw data transformation to high-level data abstraction with rich metadata and the semantics can be overly expensive uh, with regard to the memory consumption and uh, their needs to be carefully handled or managed. Also, there are another uh, memory usages for uh, in-memory library, that is the indexing. Uh, in data space, we observe that if it use FFC, SFC to construct uh, uh, its data index. It will consume like uh, uh, it will increase largely with the scale of problem size. Uh, this is that uh, this is due to the fact that uh, as SFC will construct a mapping between the two D data or three D data and the index space which is then evenly mapped to the data space server. So this uh, completely map between um, 2D data or 3D data to a, in, to a, a full index space will consume a lot of, uh, like a, a large amount of uh, memory, especially at a large scale problem size. And the dimes consume a small index costs because it stores the index at the simulation process rather than the uh, metadata server. After evaluate uh, the overall performance and the memory usage, we continue to compare the in-memory libraries by uh, using high-level socket and uh, low-level uh, RDMA resources. As you can see that uh, uh, socket is, uh, is uh, uh, system-wide resources and uh, limited by a max num number sitting by system administrator. So when we do in large scale parallel data movements, uh, data space and dams fail to handle the max uh, socket connections due to lack of uh, resource control mechanism on sockets. And um, although uh, RDMA resource is handled by uh, Cray UGNI, uh, it is still suffers from out of memory uh, failures without an uh, abstraction layer for resource control. And overall, the uh, RDMA can outperform a uh, socket by about uh, 10%. So, 
we based on the uh, experiment, we conclude finding for why using high-level protocols such as socket is is more convenient and portable. Uh, proper rate low level RDMA implementations yield substantial performance gains. Uh, this uh, accompanying the challenge is that uh, the non travel uh, engineering effort, effort on the adapting the low level implementation to the various of application scenarios. Uh, in another uh, comparison uh, experiment, we compare the uh, in-memory libraries by uh, run them uh, by run uh, workflow in a shared model. The shared model <coughs> can improve about a ten percent of performance. This shared model actually is co-running simulation and the in-memory lab uh, frameworks and uh, analysis on one node. This can save save the. Uh, time of uh, ex uh, exchange data uh, between um, two different between different nodes and we found that uh, not all uh, HPC si uh, systems support shared mode well for example Titan doesn't allow two MPI instances run on one node and Cori also not allowed heterogeneous running so Cori uses uh, use the dynamic RDMA credentials to allow for the shared mode. Uh, ERC actually uh, act as a centralized service, may be overwhelmed by large-scale parallel data movement. So that this, despite the substantial performance improvement by a uh, shared mode, that this shared memory is uh, restricted to running mode on some leadership HPC systems due to a security considerations. Based on our evaluations, we summarize the uh, portability of these in-memory libraries. And uh, first of all, at a hardware level, GPU is mostly not supported by the current in-memory libraries, and the GPU enabled workflows are required to take care of the data movement between GPU and the CPU memory. At transport layer, data spaces, dams, and the flex paths support both TCP sockets as well as the high-performance high protocols such as the RDMA UG, UGNI. In contrast, DCAF ramps the workflow components into a MPI communicators. This means that DCAF can only support the MPI implemented uh, uh, workflows. Cori uses the uh, dynamic RDMA credential to allow for the shared model. ERC uh, as a centralized service may be overwhelmed by large-scale parallel data movement. So to achieve high performance and uh, portability for expert users, most of in-memory libraries can be configured to reduce the layers of IO stack and port to low-level APIs. For non-expert users without the knowledge or performance tunings, these libraries can be ported to high-level abstraction APIs such as Socket and MPI. Uh, for the robustness, uh, we are actually uh, encounter the auto mem uh, RDMA issues and uh, data dimension overflows and out auto memories and auto socket auto DRCs. All of these issues are result uh, result in like uh, a failures of uh, large scale parallel uh, data movement and uh, data and uh, large scale parallel runs. So using sophisticated high-level abstractions doesn't always improve usability and robustness. In an ex ex extreme run, uh, available resources might be overwhelmed by high abstraction overhead and lead to crash, particularly while running those data-intensive workflows. Based on our evaluations and analysis, 
We conclude uh, the insertions of HPC memory computing libraries. Uh, first, first, for the uh, global memory object store, such as data space and DAMS, uh, the data are organized and staged well at memory and can be can be accessed by various of analytics via common APIs, such as uh, read and write. But the HPC data with high dimension uh, is difficult to organize and is indexed. Uh, for high dimension data with uh, complex mapping between memory and in memory storage and user applications will result in uh, will um, potentially result in lack of supporting end-to-end uh, -end access for the data flow systems such as D uh, DCAF. Uh, it do doesn't need to index data in storage, but uh, it. Uh, uh, it also has uh, a low complexity on data organization and uh, layout, but uh, it, ha it needs a uh, pretty fun data flow paths and uh, data operations. Uh, this result in uh, ex extra work for the uh, non-expert users. Also, we, um, for the HPC memory computing, uh, we have to uh, like a predefine some pre primitive uh, data operations such as split, match, uh, reduce, and transform, and etc. So that's all my uh, presentation. Thank you.